So in this video, I'm putting myself and Ladybug out through a winter camping test. strategy is usually to put the car engine on and let it run while I'm making my bed so that by the time I am finished making my bed and ha have my hot water bottle and have my tea, it is warmed up to about 72 degrees in here and which feels very hot like I'm sweating and then I can get under my covers, turn off the car and that will last for quite a few hours and when it is normally in the 30s, high 30s or 40s, that lasts me all night and I'm fine and then in the morning sometimes I'll turn it back on while I'm making my coffee to get the chill off until it gets warm up. But that is what I don't know since it's going to not necessarily get that warm out again. It will be about 30 something degrees, 35 degrees tomorrow. And in the evening here, it's going to drop to about 13 degrees. So I will let you know if the strategy still holds when it gets down into the teens and then doesn't warm up again during the day. If tonight I feel like it's too cold, I might uh, create a little tent around my head inside of my van to keep it warm, figuring that it will create another area of warmth for me but otherwise I'll crawl under my covers I'm tired I think the cold makes me tired so I will go to bed I will say good night and I will see you in the morning There was a little bit of water that is now ice in this. So good thing I didn't fill my tanks because that would have happened possibly in my tanks. I do have this, so I've brought this over here. There are ice chunks floating around in it, if you can see that, but at least there's enough liquid that I can pour it and I'll get my coffee started. <laughs> oh dear. I didn't notice that before, but look, there's a chunk of ice floating around. I think this isn't working because it's too cold, because it's full. So I'll wait for it to warm up a little bit. So look, already I'm warming up. The, this is just the percent humidity it is right now, so 35% humidity. This has risen three degrees in a minute. <laughs> so, and, I mean, this is pointed right at it, but it is morning time. I'm gonna let this Yep, look, see it's raising, it's already 18, so I'm gonna let this warm up and see if it works. If not, I'll change it up, but I just shook it. It has, it has propane in, er, has butane in it. So I don't know what the freezing point of butane is. <laughs> what was left over of my tea is also frozen. Look at this. potty started. There we go. And the uh, ambient temperature is now 46. I've had 
the van running for about eight minutes. So that's pretty good. It warmed up very fast. But I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it get to maybe about 60. I don't know if you can see the sun is poking through over here. So it looks like it's at least gonna be a sunny day. Nice and warm in here, 70 degrees, but I'm putting my coat on so that it warms up with my body a little bit. Today, I'm going to use some of this beautiful bread and make a sandwich. Nothing beats avocado on sourdough bread. My van is colder than a refrigerator. It would be nice toasted as well, but I sometimes like it just as it is. I could eat it all day long. things without my brace today. You might be able to see the swelling still around this area. 
it's tight, but as soon as it's healed completely, I'll start physical therapy to be able to give it range of motion again. Those are the kinds of movements that hurt when I go up and down like this or try to lift something with my thumb and area. So that is what still hurts me. Mm. So I just finished warming up my van a little bit. Again, it's 44 degrees Fahrenheit inside of my van. Outside, it is still in the upper teens. And the sun is out, which helps. So I think I'm learning a few things that if the weather is nice and even though there's snow on the ground and it's cold outside, when the sun is out, it is relatively comfortable inside the van. I think in the 40s is where I am most comfortable when it's cold outside. I think if it were to get any more consistent cold weather outside and it was consistently in the upper teens inside of my van, it would be unbearably uncomfortable. So my experiment was about seeing if I could be in rougher weather than I am used to, which yes, it goes down pretty cool in the desert sometimes when I am in Arizona or California or Utah. It can feel very cold at night because of the contrast of how warm it is during the day. And I pretty much know that my van can handle that situation. I don't feel cold at all in that type of weather. I have learned how to cope very comfortably in my van, but it does get warm during the day. So again, you can do activities outside or sit inside your van all day if you want to and be comfortable. In this type of weather, what I'm seeing is that if it is really, really cold outside, I would need some type of more constant heat source maybe. I don't know, I don't know. I have heard that it is okay to run your van as long as you need to. Cars are made to idle. It'll run out when your gas runs out. Up until this point, that is what I use as my heat source and as my air conditioning source if I should ever need. I've never really needed an air conditioning source. I just use my car's heat and it does the job. It really does. I, especially when it is not consistently cold weather and I don't feel like I have to have it on all the time. If I were in really, really cold weather, even below zero type weather for a couple days, I think I would go crazy because basically you would be inside your van in that type of weather anyway. And I'm really not equipped for that. For people who enjoy winter sports, it is perfectly doable in this size vehicle, even without a constant heat source because you really can escape from the elements and you can get inside, warm up your van, and it works really well. And overnight, I had no issues. I think I learned that I would try to have some sort of tent over my head inside the van so that it protects me even more. And I might even experiment with that just to see if you have one of those tents on your bed, how that would work because tent campers do that all the time and they are in a lot more extreme temperatures and do just fine. Of course, they are well equipped with everything that they're wearing and all of their gear. And since I'm not going to do that type of outdoor sporting, I do not need that type of gear. But it was nice to know that I could get down into the low teens and make it and feel comfortable. And knowing that if I do go to maybe Alaska in the future or some colder climates or in the winter in Montana or Wyoming, and I am stuck in really inclement weather for a few days that it won't be that I, that I can do it. So that is nice for me to know just in case that ever happens or if I do decide that I want to be in those conditions for any length of time. So I hope you enjoyed experimenting with winter camping with me. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.